In a world plagued by bad drivers and poor sportsmanship ratings, one car could bring peace and order to the online racing community. And that car is not this. Because, of course, the BMW M4, as good as it already is, in pace car form, it kind of has some disadvantages compared to the normal one. Now, this car is not strictly speaking bad or worse compared to the normal M4 in terms of performance, in terms of handling, or any of that kind of usual stuff. And in a funny kind of way, it's almost like a, a more affordable car, you could kind of say, because you can, of course, buy it from the mileage exchange using mileage points instead of credits. So in that kind of way, it is an interesting purchase, but the main disadvantage, and this is, of course, something that we've talked about a whole lot on this channel, is the category. Now, it's kind of a shame, but at the same time, kind of an understandable one, that this car is, of course, in the notorious Group X category. But, of course, as I said, that's not too surprising. It is, after all, a pace car, just like a couple of other pace cars as well in the game. Now, we will discuss those as well, but in the form of a BMW M4, this is, or at least this was, up until recently, the newest pace car to be featured in the game. Now, of course, we also have the Mercedes AMG pace car now as well, which is a, a cool newcomer, and for the longest time, the only pace car in the game was, of course, the R34 Skyline, which, for some strange but kind of cool reason, was usually available in two forms, both with and without the roof-mounted flashing lights. Now, the Skyline was always a really good car because it had the novelty factor of the livery and the lights, but it was almost as good, generally not quite as good, but almost as good as the regular Skylines. You could still tune it to over 900 horsepower, it was still extremely fast, and crucially, even though it was categorically not the best value, because it was often a car that you had to unlock or is a six-figure price vehicle, it could at least still offer a lot in the way of racing, because you could actually race it, likewise with this one, which of course was added to Gran Turismo 6 in an update. And it turned out to be a brilliant car, because you could tune it up to exactly 1,000 horsepower, and it turned out to be basically one of the fastest non-supercars in the game. You could get it up around, say, 270, 275, without the use of NOS or Slipstream around Route X. A seriously quick car. Nowadays on GT Sport, on the other hand, it's kind of a different situation, because this car, of course, like every other vehicle in the game, no longer falls under the performance points category, and, kind of weirdly, also doesn't fall under the end category, even though I kind of feel like it should. It's not like this car's any quicker than the normal one, so it's kind of a shame that we can't use it in racing. At the same time, as I mentioned earlier, though, it is, of course, a pace car, so in the general sense, it would be probably more strange if a car this different wasn't featured in Group X. It would be kind of a an insult to stuff like the BMW i3 if that one was and this one wasn't. That would be the exact opposite of the way things should be. But in terms of how the car actually performs and whether or not you should get one, well, that really does depend. And I've said this about a number of cars, especially those that fall into Group X, though. And in the case of this one, it certainly applies as well, because if you're looking purely for the fun of driving a novelty car, if you're an M4 fan, for instance, if you want to make a, a really convincing police car livery, that kind of thing, then sure, it's a great one to go for. The fact that you can get it with mileage points is an interesting little quirk, kind of a gimmick, and the Group X category is interesting, I guess, in its own way. And of course, as you can see in the video, you definitely do not lose any of those traditional BMW handling characteristics, namely a lot of driver feedback, a lot of fun, and of course a very tail-happy nature. It's a perfect drift car straight off the bat. You don't lose any of that. You've got the same performance or close enough. I've never found it to be significantly different to the normal M4 myself. So if you want that aspect of it, it delivers on all fronts. It looks the part, it's interesting, an alternative way of paying for the car, and it offers everything in the terms of actual driving that a normal M4 does. So for all of those things, sure, go for it. If you just want to drive it for the fun of it, or use it, for instance, in like a meetup lobby or a cruise, or the police events that people sometimes like to host, sure, it's perfect for that. But for racing, well, of course, that's another thing entirely. 
Now whether or not you should be able to race a pace car at all is up for debate, because of course in real life you never would, that's not the point of the car, and generally speaking the pace car isn't quick enough to actually compete in whatever race it's a pace car for, be it Formula 1, uh, V8 supercars, DTM, whatever the case may be. But that brings me to the issue with this car for existing Gran Turismo players, and that is we're used to using these. As far back as the Pace Skyline, we've always been allowed to use them, so suddenly having that taken away can be a bit jarring, and kind of disappointing at the very least, if not jarring. So to me, this is the kind of car which feels as good as it did before, for sure, better in some ways, the graphics, the sound, of course, the physics, but in terms of actual usability, unfortunately, it's taken a pretty bad hit because the fact that you can only buy it every so often from the mileage exchange, and also, of course, much more importantly, the fact that it is in the next to useless Group X, really does hinder the kind of love, actually, and that's what worries me the most, that people could have for this car. Newer players, people who haven't played GT6, people who haven't played any of the older games, perhaps, younger people, they don't get why we would want this car to not be in Group X, because to them, they've never known anything else. Whereas for us who have raced pace cars in games in the past successfully, because they've always been really good, well, this really is a hit against it. Unfortunately, we can't really change that. So unless Polyphony does, that's all I can really say about the car's categorization. It's useless for racing, but if you just want to drive it for the fun of it, and you can for sure have a lot of fun with it, or as I said, use it as a basis for cool liveries like taxis or cop cars, then sure, go right ahead. And it's the kind of car that makes for a nice novelty collector's piece, as stuff like the Jay Leno tank car has always been in the franchise as well. So sure. Depends what kind of driver you are, if you like driving for fun or novelty, go for it. If you're a pure racer, it's kind of pointless. But overall, that's it for this pick. Of course, I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.